Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Huh? How y'all doing out there today? Uh, God willing, everybody's doing okay. Uh, I know, you know, there are those who are, you know what I mean? And you're enjoying life and you're living life to the fullest. And then I know there are those who struggle, you know what I mean? So for those who are struggling, continue to dig deep, continue to persevere, you know, which means to forge ahead, although it's not easy, just forge ahead, you know what I mean? Every day, as long as you breathe, you have another minute, another hour, another day to get it right. You know what I mean? So just keep forging ahead. And for those who are doing well, continue to enjoy it. Continue to stay humble. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, let's strive hard to make it work, right? Um, today, I just wanted to speak about how easy it is to almost become a victim, you know? Um, as y'all know who watch, you know, watch me, I did 25, you know, years in prison straight. And, um, you know, I talk about the lessons that I've learned along the way. Now, mind you, many haven't learned the lessons. So many continue to go back. There are those who are in who refuse to learn lessons. And that's why, you know, the cycle continues. Uh, but I learned a lot. And, um, oftentimes it was either things that I went through that allowed me to grow or things that I watched others going through that continue to allow me to grow. Um, and so when I speak about being a victim, it's not necessarily, you know, sexual assault or nothing like that, but it's also being uh, victimized, you know, by uh, the hood, you know what I'm saying, the environment, uh, sometimes my own mentality, you understand? So, um, but I think about not being aware of the signs and oftentimes that's what has us, uh, become a victim, the signs, you know, watching for those things that are around us, um, that are right oftentimes in front of us. Um, and I remember it was a guy, he was a young guy, uh, Spanish, I believe he was mixed, but he was Hispanic. And I think his name was uh, Snoop. And, uh, he was actually in a cell with a, a friend of mine and, uh, young was no bad dude. You know what I'm saying? Worked out, you know what I'm saying? Worked in the kitchen, chill, right? But he came across a chameleon. And this chameleon was a dude, he was from DC, you know, um, and he seemed laid back on the surface, real intelligent. You know, you watch him, he had like hazel eyes or something, you know what I mean? And he seemed real chill, real, you know, just like a ladies man, you know, and uh, he always was at the booth talking to the girls or whatever, uh, female COs. But if you really knew him, you know, if you really knew him, now he did time in Detroit, he did time in New York. And he did time somewhere else. I, I don't think it was Florida. I think it was uh, it was somewhere down south. Um, hmm. You know, because him and I spoke a lot of time. You know, we were in the Virginia system. So, you know, those who were from uh, D.C. or Arlington, Alexandria, you know, uh, Merlin up here kind of got, you know, together once from time to time just to get to know one another, to see who you know, et cetera, et cetera. And some bonds remain, you know, over fours and some weren't, you know. I don't I don't get tight with guys because they're from D.C. Uh, or from up the way, uh, as guys would say it down there. I get I get cool with you if you're a man, man. If you if you carry yourself like a man, you carry yourself respectful. Uh, and respect other people, you know what I'm saying? I, I respect you, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be from my neighborhood, my city. I had to be from none of that. I don't care, you know, psh, it's people in D.C. that probably can't stand me, and, you know, I can't stand them, you know, for the wrongs that they do, and they might not like me for the right that I'm striving to do, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, so this guy uh, from the city, he was, uh, he was a chameleon, you know what I mean? And I say that because if you sit back and listen to him, he was real intelligent. He used to come to uh, NOI class, Nation of Islam class, so he did that for, like, maybe a month and a half. Um, and then he stops. I hadn't seen him in a while. Um, because I guess, you know, him and I had spoken and we didn't really speak about the things that he wanted to. A lot of time it was first, you know, knowledge of, yeah, we got to get right. Our youngest man, these youngest man got to tighten up. They don't even write the police up. They don't do this. They don't do that. They don't start riots. So then the talk wave in inevitably changed to, you know, Man, these dudes, wow, they soft, man. Sometimes you got to let them know how soft they are. And then that's when I come in with, yeah, you know, some of them, some of them wild. Some of them don't have the same upbringing, but you got to watch them, you know, and, and, and some of them worth working on and working with, you know. So, you know, that's my talk. I'm not a yes man. So if you come to me with things I don't agree with, I'm going to say, I, I don't feel it or I don't agree with it. I'm going to give you my point of view. I'll let you speak for a second, though. But after a while, you're going to see that I'm kind of 
on my path and you on your path, you're going to make your way elsewhere. So, and eventually he did that. And he used to work out with this little dude, Scoop, uh, Snoop. Yeah, Snoop. Yeah, Snoop. I think that was his name. He used to work out with him. But his workouts were wild. You know, his workout were wild for those who would see it. And so, you know, I was on the other side of y'all, but I could see him working out. And it actually, you know, someone pointed it out to him, like, man, look how dude work out with dude. And you can go on a squat rack. You know, you put your neck up under the, the squat rack. Cause you put the weight on your back and you go down you come up. Now, more or less, you know, the weights are harder you know, heavy. So, you know, sometimes you need a spider. Now the squat rack spider is a wild spider. <laughs> that's, that's usually when someone is actually behind you, like almost like directly behind you, mimicking your movement, their arms are under yours, and they're going down with you. Now their purpose is really to, you know, support you. If that weight get too heavy for you to come up, they behind you to lift you up. Problem is that's not really the type of position you want to be in. If you really not, you know, built to handle what could come along with that. And I say that honestly, I, I've known a guy, and there's no exaggeration, I've known a guy to get raped because he was allowing a particular guy to do that, you know, spy on him. And then when he spied on him, he doing little things like bumping up on him and so forth and so on. Eventually the guy actually raped him, no lie. Uh, and um, that started dude down a rough path. So this young guy, he not listening to, the dude, you know what I mean, uh, that done, done time in all these places. You know, cause like I said, on the surface, dude, you know, brown skin, kind of uh, darker than myself. They say had hazel eyes, bald head, you know what I'm saying? Pretty serious, was no sucker. You know, but he always talked about having a knife on him. You know, his time in other places. When I was in Detroit, whoa, whoa, whoa. When I was in New York, whoa, whoa, whoa. So he always talking that gorilla talk, but he had the ability to talk that conscious talk. So he kind of mingled with different people. The youngin didn't take the signs of him always speaking aggressive. Like I've seen him talk slick to young and on the way power. Man, hurry up, lift the weights, man. God, you know what I mean? Like yell at him. Da, 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 da. And see, when he's doing that, he's not checking him. He actually is pushing the envelope to see how far he can go, how much young is going to take. How is he going to take it? Because you can straighten somebody and you can do it for him. Like, come on, man. You know, and that's, that's a straighten. It seems a little serious, a little harsh, depending upon the circumstance, but it's like the dude might be like, oh, you got it, I got it, you know, I'm on it. But if you, I mean, you chewing into him, and he was chewing into Young and one day on that weight pile because Young and couldn't get a, like a certain amount of weight up, you know, so he going in on, blah, 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 blah. you know, and uh, other people saw, other people saw, you know, what he was trying to do. Um, when they would stretch, there was, a, you know, I'm not, I've seen it, you know, like on yoga, um, stretching, but the Younger would lay on his back and dude would stand up and like, you know, young would have one of his legs up and he would take the youngest leg and like lay on it, trying to get youngest leg as close to his forehead as possible. But it looks like a sexual position. Like you really trying to put him, you know what I'm saying? In the buck, if you will, with one leg, you know, um, others would sit back and look at it like, what, what this joker doing, man? e -Y. Right. But they see it, right. Especially the older booty bandits. They like, and they would look at it. And so he was trying to coax Youngin to get in the cell. Mind you, he would yell at Youngin. He would bark on him. He would tell him, come here, man, come here. You know, if he saw Youngin kicking it with somebody that was conscious or aware, he would kind of put a wedge in between them. You know, and all, and this is the truth. All this was going on in one month's time. So uh, one day he tell my man, he said, man, I'm going to move out the cell. I'm going to go in the cell with a uh, dude. So my man like, yeah, cool, if that's what you want to do. And my man was aware, you know what I'm saying? He'd actually get young in the game, if you will. He'd talk to me like, man, you know, be careful who you working around being with, you know. But there was a, there's an understanding in prison. And it's sad, but it's on the street as well. It's almost like when you know someone doing wrong and doing foul and their intention is to impose that on someone you're cool with, uh, but you're not necessarily super, super tight with them. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you're not supposed to say nothing. This is prison culture because what happens is that youngin can and may go to the dude and be like, man, I rock with you, but my celly telling me, man, stay away from you. Now, the guy is thinking, hmm, dude is getting in the way of my yeah, relationship, my attempted uh, um, sexual relationship, you know, or my attempted 
using this youngin' for being a drug mule or a flunky or whatever. So that guy will approach the room and be like, hey, man, you getting in my business. You know what I'm saying? Let me and youngin' do us, man. You know, now you might rock with the youngin'. So you want to put the youngin' up on game, but in prison, it's like, you know, you step in somebody's way. And that, could, that, that, that caused a lot of fights. And a lot of it has to do with the ones in the middle. The youngin's not knowing where to go, which side of the fence to fall on, right? So, uh, yeah, so after working out with the young, you know, in these sexual type workouts, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, screaming on him, you know, young and trying to get him in the cell. So when he relays that to my man, he gonna, he gonna move the dude's cell. He's like, all right, you know what I mean? But he wasn't sure. Youngin was sensing something. So he sat at the table with the guy one day. And my man sitting, you know, he's actually in the cell, but he's like, you know, sitting against the door waiting for cell break, you know, so he's just waiting against the door. He looking out and he see the dude getting at the youngin. <laughs> and eventually the conversation came back, you know, through uh, the youngin that he was telling the dude, he not sure if he want to move. You know what I'm saying? He cool with his celly. He kind of established when he trying. So the dude, he upset. He like, man, you said you was going to move. You going to move, pack your stuff and come on. That was what he said. So the young was like, man, I don't, I don't want to move. I don't want to move. No lie to do. He took a cup of urine that he already had, a cup of urine, and threw it in the young face. Splash. So the young wiped his face. You know what I'm saying? He back up to do. He want to roll up, but the CO, somebody said, somebody yelled, CO. So, the, you know, he sat back down. He looking. Right. So young and go to the cell. He tell, you know, tell my man. So my man get out the cell to you know sit outside the cell just so young could clean his face up and all that, right? But he's still watching the youngin because the youngin had already made the decision to move. Now he he recanting because he's sensing something, and as you can see, you know that's something uh was a plan in in motion. So the dude E is under the TV, you know what I'm saying? Now he got his knife brandishing at the COs can't see him because there's a mirror over there by the, the back door and there's a mirror by the front door. But under the TV area, the CO would have to look like strained against the glass so the CO can't see. So E up under the TV, like walking back and forth, like, you know, with his with his hand on his, you know, knife, which was nothing but an ice pick, but, you know, it's damaging. So he walking back and forth, kind of talking loud to himself, like, yeah, man, you know, I'm out my business. I do me, woo, you know what I'm saying? I hope dudes learn to do them. So my man take that as a slight. So my man pull up on him, like, hey, man, what's going on with you? You know what I'm saying? So dude get in his little defensive mode. Like, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I ain't talking to you. You know, I'm a director, but I'm just saying, though, dude's never dude's business. So my man, like, if you're talking to me, let me know. Slim, you know, your the youngin, my Sally, you know, came to me with a couple of, you know, uh, questions. And I'm like, hey, I ain't never put drag your name. I said, you know what I'm saying, young, you got to decide what you're going to decide. You're going to move how you want to move, but you got to be wise in how you move it. Yeah, I told him that. The dude like, yeah, but still, you know what I'm saying? I like to mind mine. I don't, you know, I, don't, I just do me. I let a dude do them. You feel me? So my man, like like I said, that's what I said. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so, you know, they kind of drifted without speaking. But the youngin, you know, he was, he was, he wanted to press him in the hallway. He wanted to press him, you know what I'm saying? Like, youngin ain't go to dinner that night. He didn't go to breakfast because dudes told him he was in the hallway waiting for him. Because it's like a, it's like a, 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 What's the word? Oh, I want to say, uh, um, you know, when you turn somebody down, ladies, when you turn somebody down, rejected, a rejected boyfriend, right? He feels rejected now. He had it, he had it made up in his mind. He was going to get Youngin in the cell, yeah, and sleep with him. And so Youngin, you know, changed his mind. And that blew his, you know, he blew his cool, you know. And like I say, dude, it came out, you know what I'm saying, to Youngin. The dude was really a savage. The dude was really going to get him, you know. But the youngin had a peep of signs. And I say that to say that even when I went in, I looked at different signs. I looked at, you know, booty bag. I wasn't worried about that because of how I was raised. But at the same time, you don't know who was coming from, how it's coming. Dudes can knock you out. Five, six, seven dudes can rape you. So that it ain't that it can't happen to anybody. That just wasn't really a fear in my mind. But you still have to watch for the signs. You still don't want to be around people like that. You got people that actually go in the cell with three, four dudes and drink wine because they just met them. And, you know, the dudes seem like they embracing them and they rocking with them. And it's like, ha, 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 and laugh, 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 and all that. All the while, the dudes see that your story is fraudulent. They see you ain't no thoroughbred. They see you just talking. You know what I'm saying? You in prison. You you get money every week from your mom. You getting visits. You a spoiled type dude. So, And these dudes is hungry. 
You know what I'm saying? They're animals and they savage and they cool with that. And they'll, you know, you come in the cell, they ain't got three, four cups of wine. Yeah. And the young and then drink it. You know what I'm saying? I know dude that then did that. You know what I'm saying? Drink the wine and dude. And they grabbed him and, and pulled him on his lap. The thing is the young and screamed and got up out of there, got about the cell. Uh, but I know some guys that weren't so fortunate, right? I know some guys that, you know, let guys talk them into holding their wine, you know, use them. And when the men, the police come by and see that there's wine in the young and said, the young and got to go to the hole and wear the charge and wear the 30 days in a hole, you know, because he was allowed, um, he allowed himself to be a flunky because he didn't listen to the guy he was talking to, how the guy, you know, he going to gas, he going to tell you, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I just this five gallons of wine. You know what I do is, man, I go ahead and hit off the dude that I rock with. I hit him with about a good hundred because I'm going to make a few, you know what I mean? Whoa, whoa. Man, you trying to make you some money? No, I'm good. You, I'm saying, ain't nothing. All you got to do is put the wine in the locker, whoa, 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 cover it up, burp it every five days. That's all you got to do. It'd be ready in a week and a half. And the young, all right, next thing you know, police smell it because it's pungent. And they, you know, they taking him to the hole. And dude got to start again. But he don't mind starting again because there's no shortage of flunkies. So if you're watching this and you're in a juvenile facility, you're in a prison, you're in jail, you're watching this, look around you and be aware of the signs. Look at those that sit at the table with you, sit playing cards with you. Look at the ones that drink with you, that smoke with you, and listen to them. Stop listening to be entertained or listening to the, the, the funniness in the story or the gangster in the story. Listen to what he's trying to convey or what she's trying to convey. Oftentimes, you know, oftentimes, there's some using afoot, right? There's some, there's some planning going on. Uh, and you may find yourself at the bottom of that totem pole. You know, most dudes that are locked up, most girls that are locked up. I don't know about girls. I say most guys have co-defendants. That mean they didn't do their crime by themselves. And most people that have co-defendants have people that didn't snitched on them. That's a fact. That That is a fact. So you have to ask yourself, you know, uh, if you like hanging in groups, if you like being around people all the time, then ask yourself, man, what role do you play in that body of people? And the same thing applies on the street. If you support others and they support you, cool. If you're the one always supporting and you're not being supported, you have to ask yourself, let me step back. Let me address this so people may know, you know what I mean? Or uh, uh, watch for the signs, especially a lot of you ladies out there. A lot of you women out there, man, you know, y'all care about men and y'all take care of men, really, because your heart it's just that. Y'all got great hearts. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to those who have great hearts, man. Good mothers, good wives, good girlfriends, and so forth. Good sisters, good cousins. Um, you got good hearts. But you have to also be aware that you have to watch for the signs in the mail. You have to watch for the signs, you know? Because a lot of times women complain about guys being no good, but you saw no good characters from the gate. But you ain't do nothing. You accepted it. And so you allowed yourself to be worn down by what you already saw. You got to be strong enough to not only watch the signs, keen enough to see the signs, but strong enough to accept, right? Appreciate and move in accordance based on the signs, you know? So that, that, that was just this piece, um, the signs, you know, and how to be careful, right? Of not becoming the victim, you know? So again, I thank all y'all for watching. I think, man, so many of y'all share these videos on um, social media. You know what I'm saying? So many of you all share with your friends. Um, and like I said, if you know any jails or juvenile facilities, if you have anybody in these facilities, please, you know, call the uh, the facility, man, and tell them, you know, I don't curse. I ain't into no silliness and I ain't into nothing. I'm genuinely just trying to make a change in the lives of those um, youth that may watch this or even adults if they care, you know, enough. Um, that is my passion. You understand me? So um, I appreciate your push. I appreciate your acknowledgement. And I appreciate your appreciation. You know, really, it means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Because I'm a, I'm a simple person for those that know me. I'm simple. Um, you know, but I definitely want to help. I definitely want to help because I owe. So, again, with that said, y'all have a beautiful day. You have a blessed day. You have a beautiful evening. Have a blessed evening. Dig deeper. Strive a little harder. And uh, know that it's all right. You know what I mean? To ask for help. And it's all right to help. Stay up. Stay at it. Peace.